The Asian University for Women may be a very young academic institution, only founded in 2008, but the difference it could make to its students' lives should not be underestimated. So far, just over 400 young women from 12 countries have come here to study, many of them from poor rural communities. The World Bank says that higher education, and higher education of women in particular, is critical to promoting the social, economic and environmental development in the region. The AUW has huge ambitions for its graduates, particularly in providing leadership and marketable skills. It has powerful supporters, which include the World Bank, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and the wife of the former Prime Minister of Great Britain, Cherie Blair. She's just been elected Chancellor. It sometimes sounds incredibly idealistic to say, you know, if we bring a group of young women together and mix them up regardless of where they come from, their religious background, um, their ethnicity, their wealth, um, that they will find more in common than they will find to disagree about. Uh, it sounds like a fairy tale, but I think the Asian University for Women is a, is a concrete example of how that is really true. It's providing diversity. It's providing special care for the students. It's providing um, a lot of opportunity. If I were at my home, I would be a married woman. The name is very perfect, Asian University for Women. The name is giving the whole vision and mission what they want the women to be. It's, it's, it's saying that it's time for women to get up and they're like, go ahead and like, see the world where they want to see. The university's chief patron, Bangladesh's Prime Minister, is a strong advocate of female empowerment. She gave a key speech at a symposium held by the university and attended by leading educators, business leaders and politicians from around the world. Education is both evidence of success in fighting discrimination as well as an instrument to fight it. By educating girls and women, we overcome any discrimination that they may have experienced and at the same time lay the groundwork for making further progress. Malaysia's First Lady is also a keen supporter of the university and of education for women. Bright young women have been brought to this Asian university for women to prepare them to be leaders in their respective countries. What awaits them when they go home, however, is far from certain. If we truly want education to make a real change and create an impact, we have to address issues that are directly relevant to their advancement. Issues that are especially acute in Bangladesh, one of the world's poorest and most densely populated countries. Half of its 160 million people are held back by inequality in inheritance, property, marriage and child custody laws. Traditionally, women worked unpaid in agriculture, but that is starting to change with greater numbers of girls getting at least some education. A revolution again has occurred. Um, and partly that's been driven by the advances in education, which uh, have uh, really brought women out of their homes and into the workforce. However, the gender gap is very much a reality, especially in the factories. The $10 billion garment industry may help boost Bangladesh's 6% GDP growth rate and employs 1.4 million women, 80% of its workforce, but it is still badly paid work. The challenge that Bangladesh now is facing is in fact in uh, moving up the value chain in terms of sending increasingly skilled labor which is in demand overseas and that's where again continued investment in education, getting more girls into, into secondary school and in tertiary and of course an issue that we haven't touched on uh, up until now which is the quality of the education system. You know it's one thing to get girls into schools, it's another to ensure that when they come out they have the skills that are actually in demand in the labor market. There's a tremendous shortage in Asia of both IT and engineering skills. The AUW has been given a 120 acre site by the Bangladeshi government to build the country's first purpose-built campus which it hopes will be ready in two years time which will not only boost the numbers but also the quality of the education it offers. Our function, our comparative advantage, is really in finding a group of women who are extraordinary 
and providing them with an extraordinary education so they can, in fact, make an extraordinary contribution in, in turn. So the focus is on quality, focus is on cultivating skills of leadership and, and strategic thinking that will enable them to be re, really impactful in the societies they go back to. And it makes economic sense as well. Not using women in the labor force inhibits a country's growth by between 1 and 2 percent. Bangladesh is expected to grow this year by 6.7 percent. A rate of around 9 percent could make the difference in overcoming the country's grinding poverty. And you don't need a maths degree to work that out.